Hello, this is Jane again. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate your presence. So this is going to be just a really quick guide on how to teach art. So it shouldn't surprise you that the best way to teach art to children and beginners of any age is the most simple way. This method emphasizes painting from the soul after you've been taught the absolute basics of art. That's all you really need in order to express yourself. So I believe painting from the soul, I have a video on that, is the future of art given that digital art programs can now simulate images that look like human painted masterpieces. So it's almost like being able to paint a masterpiece has been made moot because a computer can now do it. So this fact alone <laughs> turns the art world on its head and raises authentic expressionist hand-hewn painting to new heights because computer art cannot do that. <clears throat> Furthermore, digital artists are also impaired from creating from source because the computer itself is a firewall to connecting to source. So this all goes back to being human. It's almost like we're being pulled away from being our human selves slowly through all these different avenues by technology. So enter a whole new future art world where futuristic art, art technologies go to die. So knowing how to teach art becomes really, really crucial in this hot digital climate. So how do I teach art in this day and age? Well, here are some guidelines. I'm going to start with the do's and then go to the don'ts. Every child and beginner needs to learn the absolute basics of color, drawing, perspective, light, composition, and anatomy. I, might, I may have left one or two out, I don't know. Just think about it. So they have to learn these basics <clears throat> before they purposefully deviate from the basic rules of art in order to create their own unique style of art, which I believe everybody has, just like you have a unique fingerprint, just like you have a unique electromagnetic signature. Everything about the human being is absolutely unique. There is only one, even your aura. <coughs> So starting every art lesson with a free expression segment in any medium, it doesn't really matter, you know, it could be paint, pencils, crayons, whatever. It would be like a, a play time to sort of set the tone for spontaneity and it allows students to get familiarized with their art materials. They get familiarized with other students and most of all their teacher. It is so important for the teacher to build a relationship of trust with their student or students. Because if their students are going to be asked to pour out their heart and souls through their art, when it comes to the Canvas grand finale part of the curriculum, then children are going to have to be taught how to paint from the soul and they're going to have to trust their teacher. And every student needs to be taught a healthy dose of inspiration methods, which I go into more on my YouTube channel. You can check that one out too. My channel is still very much in its infancy, so please subscribe. And it's also a great idea to begin each lesson with a creative meditation. Again, I have one 
for younger kids on my channel so check that out too so you get the idea you're just getting everyone in the mood to be their most creative self and just set the stage for maximum creativity which makes sense it's called creative intention so it's also paramount to nurture and encourage every student at every step lest they determine for themselves that they are not artistic and many do how many people do you hear say oh I can't even draw a stick figure when they see beautiful art that's what they say and the truth is that we are all born creatives we are from source and source is by nature creation the future of humanity depends on our ability to create and possessing healthy functioning imaginations is itself intrinsically connected at an early age to art art is one of our earliest experiences with being and experiencing being a sovereign creator think about that for a minute that's how important art is it lays the foundation for our entire creative life well those are some of the do's in the guideline on how to teach art and here are some of the don'ts and how not to teach art art teachers must refrain from deciding which art is good or bad in their estimation any negativity expressed has long-lasting effects on the student as they are so young and impressionable and never have students copy anything all work they sh do should be original because the reproduction of two-dimensional images serves no purpose and eliminates all other dimensions that could come into play you know when you're open and you're creative and connected to source there are other dimensions that you tap into that work with you as you create if you're copying something it's just a focus point it's myopic it's just not part of being creative at all another thing I'd like teachers to do is refrain from making any students art an example because if it is lauded as a good example then the other students try to mimic it to curry favor from the teacher and then they abandon their own original way of expression again they become myopic and focused on something else that's outside of themselves and their inspiration isn't coming from within also if the work is shown as a bad example the student just locks up their creativity and I have a word for that and it's called art freeze and many many people suffer from it they don't even know they have it because at some point in their young artist life something happened where they just froze up and they just said okay I'm not an artist every child that progresses through the art lessons should be awarded a certificate of completion and not a grade this is another way of deciding whether art is good or bad if you give them a low grade they say oh I'm a bad artist an artist receiving an F is very unlikely to pursue their creative talents and this is really harmful in the future because later the ability to apply one's imagination and creativity to any discipline becomes stunted because the creative process has been impaired with negativity and when a teacher dishes out low grades it lets the artist know that subconsciously going out on a limb to express oneself is embedded in the psyche as a place to stay away from just stay away from being creative it tells them the wetter the noodle the better the doodle 
ha ha, I just made that up. It's ridiculous. It doesn't even make sense. But I think you get what I mean. Like, if you stay in the gray area, you're safe. And it's true with almost everything. Stay in the gray area. Stay in the box. Don't jump out of it. Everybody will laugh at you, ridicule you, demean you, whatever it is, you know, in our society, if you're different, you're crazy. And we've got to get away from all that way of thinking. And I know an inspiring artist and she was just crushed because she got a low grade for copying a color too lightly. It was a certain shade of yellow. And this draconian way of teaching art is psychologically damaging and unnecessary. So overall, when it comes to human artistry, we need to be most vigilant. We could lose so much in just one generation as most technology is so revered in our lives and allows life to be so much easier. So when it comes to art, the sacred act of creating will never be surpassed by artificial intelligence or advanced digital art programs. Art is art and we must know how to teach it. We must learn how to teach it like teaching reading it's that important it's like giving a child a map to the holy grail creative spirits are far less likely to become zombies in society and many already have as we go into humanity's future and evolve creativity is going to play a huge part so thanks a lot for listening Please like and subscribe and comment and all those things. And I'll be back soon with another video next Sunday. Bye.